welcome to Wilmot Kids Online. I'm Allie and I'm here with my buddy Penelope. Hey Penelope. Hello everybody. Hello. Well you might be wondering why we look a little odd today. Well every week we've been doing something special. A couple weeks we did crazy hat day. Last week was stuffy day. Well can you guess what today is? Today is dress up costume day. Yay. Now, you may not be able to grab a full costume in 10 seconds, but I think you could maybe grab a mask or just a hairband or maybe a tiara for those of you who would wear that. Anyway, can you go do that now? Can you go grab a little costume in 10 seconds? Okay, I'm counting, go now. Well, while we're waiting, why don't we talk about you? what you did this past week, Penelope? Okay. Well, on family day, me and my family went tobogganing. Oh, that's a good pastime for family day. Did you guys have fun? Oh, yeah. It went so fast. I feel like we've all done more tobogganing this year than ever before in our entire lives. Do you think so? <laughs> That's all there is to do is toboggan and go for walks, right? <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you have a little mask on or a little hairband and we can continue. Well, I hope you guys had a good week. How are you today? I hope you're well and not freezing. It's been so cold lately, but it usually is in February, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been doing a series for a while now called Our Amazing God. And last week we talked about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And we're going to be talking more about the Holy Spirit today because he's so amazing. And we're going to be talking specifically about the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I don't think I can keep my eye mask on. It's getting right in my eyes. There we go. We'll just keep the cape on so I'm still a super woman hero. <laughs> anyway, if you've missed any of our previous programs, no problem. Just go to wilmotcenter.church kids to check those out. You can watch all our past programs there. So it's pretty good. Now our February contest is going on right now. You can still enter if you're 10 or under. You don't even have to be in the area. You can just enter. And as long as you can drive to the church to pick up your prize if you win, then go for it. So what you have to do this month is write us three things that have been good for you during the pandemic, during this crazy lockdown. Name us three good things that have happened in your life. Now, if you're too young to write, no worries. Just have your parents email me and you will be entered. And you can email me at kidscontest at wilmontcenter.church to enter. So if you're 10 and under, to do that and you could win our amazing prize a magic sketch where you can draw and just push the button and it'll erase everything and it's got some pretty cool screens to change in there so it's pretty awesome we're gonna do a random draw at the end of the month to see who wins that so be sure to wait for that so today we always start our time with prayer. So get comfy if you want, lie down, close your eyes, anything that helps you focus on God, do that now. And we're gonna do a simple repeat after me prayer. I will say a line and you and Penelope will repeat it. Sound good? All right. Nice, okay, let's close our eyes and focus on God together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us, thank you for giving us, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to show love and joy, help us to show love and joy, 
Help us to have peace. Help us to have peace. And show patience. And show patience. And goodness. And goodness. Lord, help us to have faithfulness. Lord, help us to have faithfulness. And gentleness. And gentleness. Help us to have self-control. Help us to have self-control. Help us to use the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to use the fruit of the Spirit. To show others. To show others. What your love looks like. What your love looks like. Help us have ears to hear. Help us have ears to hear. hear. Your message today. Your message today. We ask all of this. And we ask all of this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for praying with us. I'm gonna give all the glory and honor and focus on God today. But before we get into our lesson, there's just one thing we gotta do. What is that? exercise that is right we gotta move in order to focus so i want all of you to join us stand up and let's get moving whoop, whoop. <laughs> nice Relax. 
You guys did awesome. Way to go. Now we can focus, right? High five. High 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Yay! Yay! Phew, that was a tough workout. I hope you all join me. I know I feel good now. That was great. Well, I'm here with a new guest. You might think she looks like Lily the Lamb, but no. It is somebody new. I will let her introduce herself. Hello, I am Lila the Lamb. I am basically kind of the opposite of Lily. She's more quiet, but I'm more loud. Are you saying that you are Lily's sister? Mm-hmm. Now, younger or older, I can't tell. Older. Okay, so more mature? I, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> nice. Well, Lila is going to help me today. So last week we talked more about the third person of the Trinity. Do you guys remember who he is? Oh, God the Holy Spirit. That's right. The Holy Spirit is God living inside our hearts. Do you remember how he gets there? When we accept Jesus as our Lord and decide to live for Him. Mm hmm The Holy Spirit does so many amazing things in our lives. Last week we focused on how the Holy Spirit guides us and comforts us. Today we're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit because He's just so magnificent. What else can we learn about the Holy Spirit, Allie? Good question. There is so much more, but today we're going to focus on how the Holy Spirit gives us the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit? God gives us fruit? Like, like apples, oranges, and bananas? Why would He do that? Well, it's not that kind of fruit. But God compares what He gives us to fruit because it helps us to understand Him. In the Bible, in Galatians 5.22, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These gifts are seeds, little seeds, that God grows inside of us to show others what His love looks like. Why does God give us the fruit of the Spirit? God gives us the fruit of the Spirit to help us show others what His love looks like. It's to share His love with others. So you're saying that if I show people love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, I can show people about Jesus' love? That is correct. All of those traits were in Jesus. And when Jesus was on earth, he told us that each one of us has a job to do. You have a job. That job is to tell others about God's love for them. One of the loudest ways we can tell someone about God's love is by showing it to that person. God's love is Jesus who he gave to each of us on the cross. Jesus paid the price for our sins so that we could be with God in heaven forever. And the cool thing is, when we accept Jesus to become our Lord of our lives, God plants those seeds and they begin to grow. That's right, you got it. Just like how a tree, it grows and grows and grows. And if it's healthy, it flourishes and it starts to produce all this wonderful fruit. That's the same that can happen to us as believers when we follow after God and grow in our faith. Fruit is produced in our life. All those wonderful things that we've been mentioning. So we can never, ever pay God back for his love for us. But we can obey his commands to love him and to love our neighbors. God wants us to show everyone we meet 
what his love looks like. But how will they know what God's love looks like if we don't show them? What, what if we just keep it all inside? Is it, is it doing any good for God or, or for anyone else? No way. If you could wear God's love on the outside, what would it look like? Think about how each of those things shows up in your life. Are you patient when you have to wait your turn in line? Do you show love to people who may not be so easy to love sometimes? Those are really good things to think about. We gotta think how we are doing in all those areas in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we can ask God to help us grow in each of those areas. You can pray to him and he will help you. He will guide you. So now we're gonna take a short break and when we get back, we'll talk more about the fruit of the spirit with Chef Tells the Truth. Tell the truth? No, 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 no. Chef, chef Tell the Truth. Oh, okay. Exactly. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high Like a diamond so, so high Like a twinkle really high Twinkle, twinkle, little star How I wonder what you are A itty spider it's a bitchy spider went up a water spout. Down came a water and I went to walk. Up above the water, the sun come out. Mom, it's a bitchy spider went out again. Bonjour, mes amis. That means, as you folks say, hello, friends. My name is is Chef tells the truth. Huh? Tells the truth? Maman, tells the truth. Tells the truth? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, my name is Chef tells the truth, the world famous creator of what I like to call fruit of the spirit salad. Very well now. This is the first ingredient in the fruit of the spirit salad. Love. Ah, yes. The love. Ah, repeat after me. The fruit of the spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit is love. I use the strawberries to represent love because they are red, like a heart. What are some of the ways you show love to others? I'm kind to people at my school. I give my sister a hug and I help my mom. Ah, très bien, très bien. That means very good, very good. Oh, what a happy little fruit we have here. Our next ingredient in the fruit of the spirit salad is joy. The fruit of the spirit is love and joy. Ah, très bien, très bien. Now, to represent joy in our salad, I like to use the orange slices. Do you know why? It's because the orange slices look like little smiles when you put them in your mouth. Boom. Now, let's get them back in our bowls. Joy. It's all about smiles and the happiness that only God can give. What are some ways you can share God's joy with others? I can make a card for my grandma or play some uh, piano for my auntie. Très bien, très bien. Are you ready for the next ingredient? 
It is peace. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, and peace. To represent the peace in our salad, I choose the grape. I choose it because many of you have probably heard the term world peace. Yes? And the grape is round like the world. So I'll help you remember. It is a peace that helps us stop fighting with ourselves and with others. The battles that happen in our hearts and in our heads. Think about the time you've been afraid of something. Yesterday, I woke up because I had a bad nightmare. I was really scared, but I prayed that God would give me peace and I was able to go back to sleep. Excellent! God does not want us to worry about anything. God will take care of our battles for us so that we can have his perfect peace. Now, I'll reveal the next secret ingredient, patience. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, and then patience. Ah, I bet you are all getting hungry, aren't you? That's why we add the next fruit, patience. I chose the banana to represent the patience because how many of you have ever had your parents bring home bananas from the grocery store that were bright, bright green? What did you have to do? That's right. You have to wait for the bananas to ripen. When have you had to be patient about something that turned out magnificent but took a long time? I had to wait two hours for a ride at Canada's Wonderland. But when I finally got to go, it was amazing and totally worth it. God gives us patience to help us know that he always has what is best planned for us. It just might take a little bit of time before we get it. And we know that God is patient with us. Even when we goof up, God waits for us to make the right choices and follow him again. All right, our next ingredient is kindness. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. I choose the pear to represent kindness because I have a pear tree in my backyard in Paris. Oui, oui, that pear tree every year with that fail, she gives and gives and gives so many delicious pears to help me cook the grand masterpieces that make me a world famous chef tell the truth. And when I think of kindness, I think of God's kindness, how he gives and helps me, and always want best for me every single day. Our next ingredient is the goodness. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, and goodness. Oh my goodness, what a salad! I chose the apple to represent the goodness because, well, it is just so good. And that is what God wants our lives to be filled with goodness. Welcome, mes amis, to the ingredient that no one knows about. In my salads, look at the fruit. It is the star fruit. And do you know why? Because many, many years before Jesus was born, God promised to his prophets to send his son, the Messiah. And one day he did. There was a bright and magnificent star in the sky. And it led the wise men to find baby Jesus. That star, it reminds us of God's faithfulness. And faithfulness is our next ingredient. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, Peace, kindness, patience, goodness, and faithfulness. Faithfulness means that God is true to his promises. It means he is loyal and is always with us. It means we can trust 
that every word in the Bible is true. When have you seen God be faithful to you or your family? Well, one time my family was going through a hard time and we didn't have much money. Well, someone ended up leaving money at our door to pay for rent and it said it was from God. Wow, that is a great example. Gentleness is the next ingredient. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness. Whew. I chose the kiwi fruit to represent the gentleness. And do you know why? This fruit looks like me, the tough guy on the outside, doesn't he? But look inside, my friends. It's just a big Mr. Mushball on the insides. God is gentle, just like the Kiwi. We should respect God because we know he is more powerful and tougher than anything. But we should also love God because we know God is love and wants to bless us. Bon, let us move on to the grand finale in our masterpieces. It is the self-control. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you know why the last ingredient is self-control? It is because it is my favorite. The whipped cream and the cherry on top. God wants us to have self-control so that we behave as Christ and make choices about our words and actions that are pleasing to God. Tell me now, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Ah, excellent! I hope you said that with me. It's pretty tough. Bye! It is time to take a look in the Bible. So if you don't have your Bible, go run and get it now because it, it is so good to get familiar with this book because it is a life-changing book that you will hopefully be reading for your whole life. So go and do that now. We're gonna be looking up the verse that we've been talking about this entire program, the verse that tells about the fruit of the Spirit. So we are gonna be looking up Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the Bible is split into two main sections. The Old Testament's at the front and a bit over halfway through we have the New Testament till the end. And we're gonna be looking up the verse in the New Testament. So you can split your Bible in half and we're still probably in the Old Testament. So keep flipping this way towards the end. And the New Testament will Testament starts with the Gospels. We got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You might see those as you're flipping, but we want to keep going. After John, we've got Acts and Romans. We just keep going until you see Galatians. And if you can't find it, no worries. I will read it out loud to you. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Oh, I got to Ephesians. That means I went too far. We want to go back to Galatians. And the big number, as I said, is 5. Galatians 5. There we go. I've got it. How about you? You almost there? Galatians 5, you're going to take your finger, you're going to scroll down those little tiny numbers all the way to 22. So you might have to flip to the next page even. Keep going, keep going, keep going. 
and stop when you get to the little number that says 22. All right, I'll read it now for you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we remember from our lesson that God gives us those things as soon as we accept Christ and Jesus becomes the Lord of our life, God gives us that seed in our hearts and that seed, those seeds can grow and become this beautiful tree that bears all this fruit. But we need to stay connected to Jesus. We gotta keep getting to know our Lord and Savior. And he wants to build these up in our life in order to show love to others. All these things, all the fruit of the Spirit is a way for us to show love towards God and towards others. I'm here with Nicodemus to talk about what we learned today. Hey Nick! Hey Ellie! Did you enjoy the program today? Yes. What part was your favorite? Well, I mean, you know that tell the truth dude? He's my cousin from France. You mean tell the truth? Oh yes, tell the truth. Ah yes, yes, we, we must pronounce it correctly. Well, Nick, we want to know what was the main thing you learned during today's lesson? Well, I learned that God gives us all believers the fruit of the Spirit to show love to all people. Yes, that's so good. I appreciated that lesson too. Awesome. Well, to help you learn even more about God, we have a Bible verse for you to look up either by yourself or with your family, and it is... John 15, 4 and 5. Awesome! And lastly, it's time for... The Weekly Challenge! <laughs> we want you to try to think of just one fruit of the Spirit, just one, that you want help with. Maybe you have trouble with being patient or kind to your brother or sister and you want to improve on that. Just think of one of the fruit of the spirit that we talked about this week and write it down, write it down, stick it on little sticky notes all over your room and pray and ask God to help you because we have to be connected with God in order to change. We can't change on our own, can we? We need to be connected to Jesus. He is the vine and we are the branches and he's the one that gives us the fruit. Does that sound like a good challenge for the week? You think you can do it? Are you up for it? Well, awesome. All right. We can't leave without praying, so let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and give all the glory to God. Sound good? Awesome. God, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for the blessing of another day. I thank you for each person watching. I thank you for their life and that you have a purpose and a plan for them and that you delight in each person. Each person you create brings you joy. And I thank you and I just pray that each person, person knows the truth of who they are, that they are your son or your daughter in Jesus. And I thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to guide us and comfort us and give us the fruit of the Spirit so that we can show your love to the world, God. Help us to grow and we give you the glory and the honor today. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Oh, you're not old anymore, Nicodemus. 
Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Ignore what just happened. <laughs> well, bye everyone. Have a great week. See you later.